Welcome to The Gathering Place in beautiful Simi Valley. You tuned in to hear our guest speaker tonight, uh, Ms. Dr. Barry Linhart. Barry Linhart. That's me. I love this guy. He has ministered to me so profoundly. When he comes here, he's always got something great to say, something fresh from the, the heart of God. But not only that, you need to check out his website. It's Forerunner Sound, right? Forerunner Sound. Forerunnersound.com. F O R E runnersound.com. He's got some great interviews there, some with Pastor Bob and others with um, Dr. Randy McLean. Dr. Randy McLean. Dr. Henry Pfizer. Dr. Henry Pfizer. I think even so, Charlie Jordan's even on there. Oh, Charlie's on there even. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So let's give a warm gathering place, Simi Valley welcome to Dr. Barry Linhart. All right, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be back in such a short order. You know, one of the things that um, that you have to contemplate is, and this is a deep house, so I can say stuff like this, but when you open things up in the spirit realm, especially when it comes to deep things, you have to complete the surgery of what you've opened. You just can't come in and open things up and just leave. However, what happened here last time I was here, um, it was like God was specifically saying something to this house, and um, I'm captivated, and I have been kind of like overwhelmed with the goodness of God and putting all the pieces together. How many love it when the plan comes together, right? And so I have, I don't know, Rodney, I got so many notes. We're going to be here for weeks, weeks. <laughs> we might be here for a minute. <laughs> However, there's some things that are pertinent because one of the things that God was really saying, and I just want to refresh it and I want to revisit it. Is that okay, Nora, if I can do that? Carol, is that okay if I do that? Thanks, Carol. Now, we don't do anything unless Carol approves it, okay? <laughs> so it's, it's um, what I began to bring last time, and I noticed even coming in here, what's the storm I brought with me from, from Portland? I brought it with me. So anyway, I'll take it back with me too, probably. <laughs> uh, we talked about dew point. We talked about the Elisha, Elijah, the upper room, uh, the, the dynamics of what's happening there. And... Um, there's some other things that I need to probably like to build, and it's going to be somewhat of a challenge because of the time that I have to bring out the things that are in me to say. I might have to come back next week. We'll see. Okay, all four of you, I'll be back with the rest of you guys. I don't know. You guys are on your own. Okay. <laughs> However, there's some things I'd like to bring out tonight, if that's okay. Is that okay to do that? First of all, I want to start off with saying this. You guys ready? I want you to repeat after me. I am. I am. God's, God's permanent, permanent address. address. Okay, you think about that for a minute. I am God's permanent address. So I'm going to ask you a question, and this ties to the value of what I was seeing and what God is going to bring the level of who he is to us, because we have actually um, moved from, if I can say it this way, I, I, I got to be careful what I say because I can go a couple different ways. So I'm just kind of navigating it here. Um, in the days ahead, you're going to see where the sons and daughters of God are going to get a revelation that they're actually friends of God. But God does a lot of things by friendship, no faith required. Now, I may I'm going to touch that on Saturday, but I want to touch some things here tonight that will probably lead into that. But, you know, most churches preach to needs. That's what they do. And when you drive by a need, please hear me on this. When you drive by a need, the people will never mature. Now, you have to have deep teachings in order to have a deep move of God. Listen to that now very carefully. I've been accused many times, you're over my head. It's not that I'm over your head. Your head needs to come up to where God's at. That's what needs to happen. <laughs> so you've got to have a, a realization that God is not trying to be, and I'll just touch it, I'm going to kiss it, and then I'm going to leave it alone, okay? God has not meant us to be king 
servant. Now, that takes weeks to unpackage that. If you go through the scriptures very carefully, he actually came here because we were friends in him before we were ever here. Oof. If you understand that, I'm going to say this, I'm going to shut it down because it's pretty deep. Inside of that friendship is the crucifixion. He went to the cross because you were his friend before you went to sin. Woo, I said, I said deep teachings, man. I'm telling you, if you want a deep move of God, you need to understand that. And we'll unlock that a little bit later. Most people think you've got to do something in order to earn something from him. That's a king-servant or king-slave mentality. Jesus didn't teach that. He didn't. And there's some powerful things to understand about that because when you get to the value of what I'm saying right there, you're going to see some things that God wants to do because he's simply your friend. Woo, how am I doing, Nora? So far? Okay. We're going to go two more minutes of deep water and then we're shutting her down, people. <clears throat> The reason, see, your, your identity determines what you realize. Your confidence determines what you decree. Yeah. I'll say it again. I'll slow it down. <laughs> your identity determines what you realize. If you think he's king and you're servant, that's your identity. And you won't realize the friendship. You won't do it. As long as you're, save, as you're a slave or servant, you'll never get into friendship. Now hear me right, he's the king. Amen. I recognize that. I honor him for that. But the intent, if you really follow it through, if you are actually in him, now listen to it, I'll say it again. I am, I am God's, God's permanent, address. permanent address. Then why are you trying to get out of your body that he has now taken over and go to a place to get out of your body to go to his. Why, why are we doing that? What's the thought there on that? If I'm God's permanent address, then why are you trying to get out of this body to go to a different place where he's already here? What's, what's up with that? Amen. Hello? Hello? See, the further you get into maturing in the things of God, you won't try to escape from this earth. That's, right. That's, right. That's why I'm saying all the people that are trying to escape and put all the end times together... There's no friendship here. It's okay. We're basing it on the faith. We have faith in the devil that what he's doing is telling me how I should react in going to heaven versus the reaction of the permanent address of the persons that's in me is governing what needs to happen on this earth. Amen. Boy, I just started off with a real winner, didn't I? Just, <laughs> just put it out there. So see, God will... Please hear me in this. I'm going to say the statement. I wrote it down. I'll read it to you. You will be led to wherever God believes in you. God will lead you to where he believes in you. you. Got that part? Here's the second part. You will go there when you believe in yourself. Back to the identity again. Did you catch that? I'll say it again. You will be led to wherever God believes in you. God's already got you figured out. He knows you better than you. He really does. But you will go there when you believe in yourself, meaning you've equated to the relationship in that friendship. He's actually believing that I'm representing him. He really believes that. Now, last time I was here, I said this. Most people think faith is a substance. Here's reality. Faith is a person. Okay? So that, see, immediately again, that person in that relationship will begin to expand the faith that he's put in you. Not that you try to build faith so you can get him to do something for you. Well, that didn't happen, brother. You probably didn't have enough faith. That's a wrong construct of what it is. When something fails, see, we want an answer. We want it explained. But God says, I'm not going to explain it to you. I'm going to give you understanding. Will you settle down enough to get understanding rather than getting an answer and just shutting me down? We, sh we shut him down in this way. Oh, it's the sovereignty of God. It's a mystery. His ways are higher than our ways. Well, wait a minute now. I'm going to bring some things here, and I'll get to my message in about 50 minutes. <laughs> By 9.30, we'll get really rolling. Because I feel there's a structure here in the righteousness of, you know, what Bob has done here through the decades. You guys need to understand, and I always will, always 
be ever honorable to who Bob is and the value of what he established in righteousness. A lot of people love to quote scripture without righteousness as a foundation, only to find the house falling after a while because they use the value of what truth is, but they don't get understanding of it. It says truth. See, truth in of itself doesn't make you free. It doesn't. That's not what the scripture says. You shall know the truth, and that's what makes you free. Then the knowing, that means to be intimate. There you go again, back to that crazy relationship and that friendship. See, when you know that relationship, that's what makes you free. Truth in of itself doesn't make you free. It doesn't. That's what I'm trying. You can't quote Bible at me, and if there's not a character of truth with that or the livelihood of who you are, the truth isn't going to go very far as far as, well, God will back his truth up. Yes, but coming you to see, you watch you manifest what you say. That's why a lot of people can preach words that are truth, but can never manifest the reality of it. Because faith is not faith only. There's also a character in faith. You're quiet. That's real quiet. See, when you teach simple surface things, Please hear me right in this, and I'm not belittling this at all, but there are levels in God. How many know there's deep levels in God? Deep levels in God. There's waters in God that it will take you all of eternity to unlock it. It will. However, I'm at a place now where, you know, one of the reasons that religion survives is because it doesn't understand the purpose of the church. It's been needs-driven rather than a place that God begins to expand the will. Ooh, I've got to be careful on how I say this. You will begin to express God perfectly. Perfectly. When you give yourself permission to be yourself perfectly. God went to himself to make you. He didn't go to the dirt. He went to himself. Why am I laboring on this? Because the value of what he's going to bring in the, please hear me on this, we want the fullness of what we lost. All have sinned and fell short of the? Okay, that means we're going back to that. Is that right? Okay, but it's not something we have to earn. It's already there. And that's what I'm saying. Like I said the other time I was here last time. Dew point is something fascinating to me. This room right now is filled with God. There's more, there's more money and gold in here you can ever shake your fist at. It goes from here up to 10 million feet in the air. I mean, there's some deep treasures in God. And there's certain atmospheres that are necessary to release that vault of that reality. Just like out there today, like I said last week, dew point, what dew point is, temperature dew point, is when the moisture that's in the air that's unseen, it gets to a certain point and the temperature demands or the water content that's in the air has to go from the unseen on the scene. We call it clouds. We call it fog. We call it different sweating on, you know, what's really humid. It sweats on you. That's because it's moving from the unseen on the scene. A certain temperature got hit and the, and the atmosphere couldn't hold it anymore. It releases it. This is a place where there's, there's foundation to have heavy movement, heavy release. But I'm not doing it here because... You know, I realize there's a revelation I'm stepping into that God in his powerful moves that he has done in order to call, and please hear me on this, redemption it was totally part of the plan to get us back to where we were started from in the original intent. The deeper understanding in that is he didn't go to the cross to get a friend. He went to the cross because you already his friend. That's a powerful thing to understand. You think you chose him? No. He chose you. I want your friendship. You know what? Because the value of what I'm saying here is it explains some things. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Whew, I'm hearing some stuff. Maybe I should just go there. Maybe I just need to. Carol, maybe I just need to go there. I don't know. <laughs> Have you ever had a place where you prayed and delay came and you thought, hey, this should happen, and it didn't happen? Three people? Everybody else got perfect prayers answered? That's awesome. You guys are, you guys are cool. Maybe I need to sit down. You, you preach to me because I had some stuff happen. I go, well, that didn't happen. And then I got this. You either off bury something's wrong in your life, or you go to the other side. You didn't have enough faith. Ever had that one pulled on you? See, there's been some construction or uh, 
some framework that has been laid out in Christendom that we measure ourselves because we want an answer why it failed rather than trying to get an understanding so it doesn't fail. I'm going to get to scripture here in a minute. There's a gentleman I was listening to, this Dr. Uh, Chris Green. He was saying some things, and I thought, there it is. It ties it all together so beautifully. Would you be interested in what he said and what I have to add to it? Because what I'm trying to say to you is, God, if he's your friend, as you know, my wife and I have been married 38, we're going to be what, 39, in a couple years we'll be 40 years married. Well, in 40 years you get to know somebody pretty good. I would hope so, yeah. <laughs> I love my wife dearly, and there's things like the other day she said something, I go, dang, that's, that is so good. Wow, <laughs> that is so good. And there's things that we build because we've, we've, have a relationship where we can steward things, you know, in conversation. Now, in the relationship to friendship, if I call my wife and she commits to do something based on it, something I ask her to do, I know one thing is for sure. She's going to come through. I don't even have to have faith for it. It's simply our relationship. She's committed. If I call her and I said, you need to be here at two, and she doesn't come here at two. Do you think I'm being jeopardized by her not showing up that she doesn't believe in me or I don't believe in her anymore? No, there's a reason generally behind why the delay is there. Oh, honey, I stopped. There was a sale. I got you this on the way. (laughs) Beautiful. Love it. A lot of times, though, we look at things in life that because of delay and what faith is, and I'm going to get into it tonight, with the train. <laughs> you missed the train. If you wanted to leave, you just missed it. <laughs> there are things that happen that are... I can't explain it because I've been told to try to get an answer on it and I couldn't get an answer on it. And the reality is God wanted me to get understanding on it. Not an answer. See, when you get an answer on something, it just gets shut down and you walk away. There's no, no further understanding in it. And so you just go, well, it didn't work. Okay. And you don't even begin to understand that the relationship that we have with God, especially if you're king, servant, or king, um, uh, slave, that reality, that doesn't work. Because you're going to judge yourself on a commodity that you thought you missed in order to make him. You think your faith is going to make God be more God because you've got God. You got faith. No. You really believe that? Do you think that your worship changes God? Keeps him from, oh, not until you worship me, I'm going to do it. Yet clearly in the scripture, he did a lot of things based on, listen to me carefully. You're my friend before you fell. Your eyes just don't, haven't been opened up to the reality of that friendship before you walked away from me. So he went on healing people based on, you were in me before this thing ever started. Before there was the first let it be, you were already in existence. Okay, I'm going into some deeper water. You guys okay? Is this all right? Can we go here? You want me to go a little deeper with you? My favorite thing that God has placed inside of me has been John chapter 11, 25 and 26. Because a key unlocked inside of me when I read it and I go, there it is, that's it. I, hadn't, I haven't gotten an understanding on it until you start going backwards on, from those scriptures, 25 and 26, and go back to verse 1. Walk it through. What's going on here? There's some powerful things that have happened because I'm trying to get everybody to go along with the value of what I'm doing in the release of this revelation, so you understand that Jesus didn't do healing for one person, he did it for a community of people. You're cleansed, you're whole. Go show yourself to the priest so you're accepted back into the community. There's some stuff there that you begin to massage, you realize he's after some other things other than just the, the healing of the person. So when you start walking this whole thing through, some of us have been through some very violent, tra- traumatic things, and you couldn't figure out what happened trying to get understanding on it. You couldn't figure it out. Remember when I was talking about, you know, on the road to Emmaus, the two there, that says, as you, I'm going to bring a condensed version so you can understand what's going on here. When you realize that trauma, as the two on the road to Emmaus, what they did is they were walking along and they were conversing on the things that they have seen the last couple of days. They watched Jesus get crucified. And it says they were walking along and they were sad. 
They were sad. Same with Mary at the tomb. She's going crazy because she's sad and she's trying to find the body. She thinks it got ripped off. She's trying to make it right. She's, she's in it. Now, there's a big jump there between the disciples and Mary and why I believe Mary is actually, actually the head apostle to the other apostles. Because the other apostles just peeked in and said, okay, whatever, I'm going back. I don't know about this because they're killing people. and i got to go back in the high. we got, we got to shut this thing down, so off they go. But Mary's still at it. She's after something because she's committed to a value that the other ones didn't commit to. Woo, I'm saying some stuff. <laughs> Yet she's blinded by the trauma. Even when Jesus showed up in both cases, whether it's on the road to Emmaus or at the tomb. Yolanda, come here. So, so, so here's Mary, right? She's, she's looking into the tomb. She's going... Oh my gosh. And she, she peeks in there and there's a couple of angels sitting there. Okay. And then she turns around and she faces, I'm Jesus. She faces me. And she says, go read the scripture. Go read John's account. She faces him. Supposing I'm the gardener. Okay. But the trauma has closed the scripture and her eyes and her heart are in the tomb. Yet alive, resurrected Jesus standing right in front of her. She can't see it. There's things in this room that you can't see yet because God needs to release the revelation to open your eyes to the reality of where he's trying to get you. So she's looking, and then it says, she's supposing he was the gardener, right? And then, just paraphrasing it, he calls her by name. Still looking at him, it says, then she turned and saw him. That means and something inside opened up and saw him. The trauma of everything and the voice opened it and she saw him. But trauma was clo it closed the scriptures. She couldn't see. She couldn't see it. Couldn't see it. Thank you. Same thing with the two Emmaus. They're walking along, talking about things that are sad. Couldn't see it. Closed down. Okay. So here's what happens. I'm going to go a little further with you. I don't know if I should go here or not. Should I go here or not? Do you know the survival of religion is based on not knowing your purpose? Church is kind of like, that's why you have religious things in churches, because they don't know the purpose of why they exist. Because they're driving on need. And anytime you drive on need, you'll never mature the people. Okay, thank you. That was really good, Dr. Barry. <laughs> Super good. Super good. All right, you guys got your Bibles with you? No, you don't. You got your phones with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell me that. Hey, man, sorry, no, 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 no. Maybe I'll get into the character of faith. I'm going to weave this over the next two sessions. I'll just weave it together. Do I have permission? Okay, go to John chapter 11. I want to see you guys look at your phones. Come on, don't just look at me. I need a... Somebody please make an app that sounds like Pages Wrestling, because I need that up here. <laughs> Back in the day, it's all you would ever hear. Those phones took away that privilege. You guys at John chapter 11? Okay, let me tell you something about John chapter 11. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't. John chapter 11 is actually broken down into two books. 1 through 12 is the book of signs. 13 through 21 is the book of life. Or excuse me, is uh, about the book of glory. For $2.37, I'll repeat it again. John chapter 1 through 12 is a book called the book of life. Or excuse me, the book of signs. 13 through 21 is known as the book of glory. There's a transition point there. You with me so far? Yes. The first, here we go, Nora. Here we go. The first miracle that happens, there's actually seven miracles in the signs, the book of signs, and the book of glory. The first miracle in John chapter 2, I think. 1, 2. It's in there. The first miracle is turning the water into wine. At the end of book of signs, is a resurrection. Starts with a funeral, ends with a 
Excuse me, starts with a wedding, ends with a funeral. Starts with a wedding, ends with a funeral. Let me give you a, can I give you something for free? Okay. In the book, in the, in, when you go back in the Old Testament, in the signs of the plagues in Egypt and all that, the first sign was what? You remember? I'll help you. Water to blood, the death of the, of the firstborn. Hmm? There's a pattern when you begin to follow God. There's, first miracles are usually, they're always usually, they're, not usually, they are based around water. Just go, go follow it through. It's all based on, you go check it out. Go see what happens. The first thing that you read in the Genesis chapter 1 is what happens. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And what was happening? Yeah, there you go. Just saying. Just pay attention to God. I, I'm fascinated by stuff like that. I'm just going, you keep doing that over and over again. Why are you doing that? Guess how much, what you're mostly made up of. Mm. Can I add a little more to that? Isn't it interesting that if we take on stress, pain, and trouble, and all the stuff we take in, that your body bears witness to what you're doing on in the inside? Did you ever put that together? When you put stress and things like that, things start coming out in different ways, and people actually contract diseases and you know, start eating you away. Now, let me ask you this. If you, let me go through this one more time. Say this, I am, I am God's, God's permanent address. Permanent address. Okay, if he's residing in there, should your body not reflect the residual of what he's as a residency of God sitting there? Yes. Then why is it such a big deal to just keep on going? Woo! Saying some stuff. Well, I could tear that up really bad right now. The reason I say that is, see, as long as your need's driven, that means your body is witnessing to something that you think you need because the relationship that you have with God isn't right. It's king slave, it's not friend to friend, it's not co equal. It's not, it's not the same. You don't see yourself on the same playing field. You have to, in order to be a friend, you have to be equivalent to who and what you are in that person also. It has to go that way. That's friendship. If it doesn't, then it moves to this. You've got to say this. The king says this. I do this. Do this. Do this. And you're always, sub, you're, you're always a subject to what the command is. Because we get the scriptures twisted because this command me. Tell me to do something. Well, if you were a friend, you already know what to do. I know what my wife would do in every situation. I just know she would. You know why? She's my best friend. Listen to the words. She's my best friend. You know what's so powerful about that? Is when Pilate was getting there ready to say, you know, I could, I could kill you. I could take you down right now. I'm a friend of Caesar. Oh, you're a what? Oh, a friend. See, a friend equals the power of what you're in friendship with. So that's why he knew I can represent Caesar and I can kill you right now. Because he's a friend. Ooh, that's just, you need to understand that's a powerful thing. That's a powerful thing to understand. You guys okay? Yeah. You know what's so powerful about that is? When something comes along as my relationship is with my wife, I'm going to keep going back, she's my best friend, okay? So when you realize your best friend, you know exactly what they're going to do, even if there's a delay. Okay, let's put it in the God category. You guys all right? John chapter 11. Let's go there. You okay, Nora? Oof. It ties in with everything, people. I, to get to the value of glory, I'm going to show you what's going on here. Whoa. It's just so good. I just think the things that I hear from different teachers, it's just, it, it, and God is just so funny. You, you, you ever listen to different people that actually are dialed in, and God starts putting pieces together for you, and you just go, there it is, there's that, there it is, there's that piece. There it is, there it is, there it is. And I'm not here to, I can play in the pool of shallow. I can. I can play really good in it. But I know it doesn't give me the depth or the foundation that's necessary to carry the weightier things of God. That's why I go for the deeper things. It actually makes you responsible once you hear it. Okay, here we go. Now a certain man was sick. He was what? Oh, he was what? Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was the Mary who anointed the Lord with... Okay, stop. It's good. You want something else for free? I have to have more than two people. Come on. Come on. That's weak. 
And I don't know if I want it or not. <sighs> the actual story of the anointing of her doing this is actually in John chapter 12. Why I say that is, it's just interesting that the writer assumes that you know this. For what it's worth, you're going, i got to get these notes down. <laughs> you can see him going like this. Okay, now there's a certain amount of things. Like and Mary who annoyed the look. Oh, gosh, I don't even know about that story yet. But I'm going to go ahead and put that anyway. Because you go to John chapter 12, and then it talks about what he's referring to here. Instead of bringing it up first and then bringing it in the narrative, he's already got this going, and the narrative hasn't happened for what he's, at, what, what's, he's saying right here. For what it's worth. Just things you notice. That was really good. Yeah, I know. And it was Mary who anointed the Lord with the anointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother's Lazarus was sick. Now watch this very closely. So you know what the problem with what we do is we've, we've taught, we've heard, we've been to vacation Bible school when we were little kids. We went through every little conference. We've been to some stuff, people. And when we hear stories, we think we got it figured out. That's why you can't hear the depth of it. So when the depth comes along, you just go, where have I been? That's kind of like when I read this, I go, where have I been? Michael, I said, where, where have I been? So the sister sent word to him, Lord, behold, whom you love is sick. Say, whom you love. That's the first mention. But when Jesus, verse 4, heard this, he said, the sickness is not meant for death but is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Let's read it again. But when Jesus heard this, he said, the sickness is not meant for death, but is for the glory of God. See, that word glory has got me tripped up. I'm just going, because God's got me on a hunt for the value of the glory. How many want the glory of God? Okay. We're not, I'm not here. I remember Lance checked me one time. He said this to me. He goes, Barry, you can't just create a whirlwind or a tornado in the building called the church and expect people to come. I thought, I don't know, I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> he goes, you got to take it out there. I go, got it. But you realize there's certain things, climates, atmospheres, all that stuff comes in. Um, I won't even go down that road. I'll just, I'll just leave that alone. Let's just stay with the narrative here. So, verse 4, when Jesus heard this, the sickness is not meant for death. Say, not meant for death. Not meant for death. It doesn't say you're not going to go through it. That's a big deal right there. Now, why I'm saying that, it's going to hurt your head when you begin to read the verses and you're going, wait a minute, I thought this was for the glory of God. Because that's what it says. Okay. Well, wait a minute, let's go back to, this is the book of signs that started with, a wedding. Turn the water to wine. Let me ask you something. The people that got the wine, did they know any about, anything about what happened before the wine was presented? You know why? Because God in himself, in the form of Jesus, was trying to get to the people to make your joy full. He wanted them to have a good time. He wanted your joy to be full. He was, you know what? His mom says, hey, won't talk to you, I'll talk to her. He said, he said, hey, Jesus, we need some wine. I mean, they ran out. And he goes, listen to me carefully. It's not my what? It's not my time. But at the interesting, when he closes the book out in the signs, in, verse, in chapter 13, it says, and now the hour has come. It's not my hour at the Canaan. And beginning of glory, he says, now it's my time. Now, there's just little nuances like that you pay attention to, and you're going, look at you. you. You just got this figured out. You're doing this stuff on purpose, aren't you? Yeah, because at the end of the day, listen to me carefully, the kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy. Okay, you tell me how that's going to happen. How does he make your joy full? Just saying. Just put that in your back pocket. Am I, am I still, you guys still with me? Okay, we're going just line by line here. This is for the glory of God. This is not unto what? Okay. He doesn't say through. He says it's not going to end in it. Now that's a big deal right there. Watch what he says again. What did he say in verse 3? So the sisters went word to him saying, Lord, behold, you love, whom you love is sick. First mention of love. Then he says, this is not about, you know, this is about the glory of God. 
Verse 5, here he goes again. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. That's the second mention. Okay. You know what? As this begins to full unfold, watch this. So when he heard that he was sick, he was there two more days. Stop, shut it down, hold it. This is a big deal, and I'll tell you why. We want things, we've petitioned God many times, and we thought it was gonna, he's going to come, but it's just not going to come your way. Because a true friend will see it through to the value of what you've requested. Maybe not the framework that you've asked it to come in, but a true friend will get it there and get it done. Think about this for a minute, that Mary and Martha have sent a word, you're one that you love, your friend, your friend, say your friend, your friend. that's your friend, buddy. It's not king servant, it's not like, oh, you got saved from leprosy, oh, no, it's your friend. Now, what's fascinating about this is, this is about a week before Jesus goes into the crucifixion. You would think at the end of the last week of your life, who's he hanging out with? He's not hanging out with the people that he healed taught on the, you know, the mount, beatitudes, and all the great following. He's not doing that. You know what he's doing? Hanging out with his friends. Uh-oh. I thought he'd be hanging out with Joe Got Faith. I thought he'd be going into, you know, I need a seer to tell me what to do next. He didn't do that. He went out with the crazy people. <laughs> his friends. John the Baptist was his friends, people. That was a friend of God. Think about it. John the Baptist, that's about, that guy is so far out there, and he was really out there. That's his friend. But when you read what Bob, what Bob, what John said, what John said about the bridegroom coming, which was Jesus, because he said, he's a friend. See, this friend thing starts popping up when you see it. You're going, wait a minute here. There's a common thread going through this whole thing. Friendship is a big deal to Jesus. Here's what's going to hurt your head. Jesus needed friends. Woo! Uh, I need you guys to go. I, I need you to come with me to the garden. I need you to come. You're my friends. Now think about this for a minute. Let's get to put some stuff. Anybody still with me, you guys? Are you? Is it too warm in here? You're trying to sleep out? Are we okay? <laughs> Thursdays are a little rougher on than Saturdays. I get it because everybody's work. I get that. You would think that a friend that has a remedy for a disease would come right away and say, hey, I'm going to help you. Okay, let me stop. Shut this down. Say this. Fear, Fear. Is, not a is not a generator. It's an indicator. Don't ever forget that. Fear is based on something that you generated and set up a set of rules around that if it hits this, then I'm in fear. Fear is not a generator. It's an indicator. Hello? You guys here? Do I need to sh dance? What do I need to do? Get, 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 make this thing go? Why did they come to Jesus? Because he was what? And then he was, what, what did he have? He had a sickness. We don't, it doesn't say what it is. Here's what's even more pathetic about this whole thing. You just go looking at it and you go, huh, I don't call it pathetic. You know what Lazarus is known for in the, in the Bible? Nothing. Nothing. That's it. He's not a man of faith. He's not a miracle worker. He's just a sick dude, man. And he's a friend. In fact, if you go to, I think it's in the next, in John chapter 13, he's at a table, kicked back, drinking, drinking that something. And he's just, that's all we know about Lazarus. That's it. That's it. But he's a friend to Jesus. This is, this is, this is powerful because a guy that has the ability to take the sickness off of somebody, like he did so many times, but for his friends, he didn't. Ooh, why is that? Anybody know? That's, you'd hate to be an enemy of Jesus, wouldn't you? If you're friends with him and he's doing this, then <laughs> I kind of hate to be your enemy, dude. Does anybody want to know? So powerful. 
Here's what it is, people. I'm going to explain some why you didn't get the answers that you were thought you were going to get. It's not that they're delayed because you didn't deserve it. It's because he's trying to do something for you to understand, not to resolve an an a question to an answer. He's trying to get you the understanding of what's happened. <sighs> Here's what happened. He says this. This is not unto death. And how many know that he died? He did. You know what their fearness was when sicknesses, what sickness would lead to? Death. Okay, think about this for a minute. I'm a friend to Michael, okay? We talk all the time. He's a doctor. He's got, a, he's got every remedy to every sickness in the world. Why? Because when death tries to knock on the door of sickness, he'll give me the remedy for it. Okay? Because what do we fear? We don't want to die. But Jesus does this. He pulls back, doesn't respond. Because he wants them to understand you are not to fear this because he's trying to have you to understand you are more powerful than death. Now, that's a deep understanding there. I'm in deep waters right now. I think this teaching I got from... Dr. Green, it's, it's so powerful, but it's beginning to put the glory together because this is for the glory of God. But he's doing it to his friend. Have there ever occurred to you, you didn't get the answer because you're a friend of God? Ooh, make you think, won't it? He actually talks to you as a friend. That's what friends do. I want you to get some understanding and I want you to get authority over death so you don't have to keep beckoning me every time some sickness comes around. You can do it because if we're friends and we're co-equal, co-heirs, then you've got to go through this. God, please hear me in this. People don't go to people to things that, you, that people have avoided things. It's for the things they went through. That's how your authority is earned. Oof. You mean to tell me, Barry, they just went in there and just let them die? Yep. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow, he said this is, there you go. He didn't say this is unto death. You're going to go through it. Oh, my word. Hello. Okay. So Mary and Martha, they're back at the old cabin there. And they're, they're fit to be tied. I thought that guy would come. I mean, he said well, he was his friend. So he's healed all these people. And here Lazarus is his friend. For crying out loud. What kind of friendship and relationship is this? How do I know that? <laughs> when they came, oh boy, if you would have been here. <laughs> it wasn't none of this, oh majesty, I present myself. If you wouldn't, no, that's not what was going on. Friends don't do that. When somebody has something against somebody and they have in their gut and you're a friend, you're going to let them have it. And that's exactly what happened. If you would have been here, and he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Because you think you're getting this right to argue with me, and I'm trying to get you to the authority as a friend of me. You don't need faith for this. We're friends. You guys okay? Yeah. Oh, boy. Thank you. See, God doesn't need your disaster to show his glory. He doesn't need your misery to show that he's king. He doesn't. He doesn't go, oh, I'm going to create this situation so I can show you how powerful I am. Boy, I'm just something, aren't I? He doesn't do that. When you realize that God doesn't create a problem just to solve it and to show you that he can do it, he doesn't need your darkness. He doesn't need darkness to show that he's light. He doesn't need any of that. He doesn't need your praise. He doesn't need nothing. God's going to be God whether you have faith or not. He is God. And if God is trying to get you to understand what the power of faith is, because God said he's giving you a measure of faith. You didn't earn it. He gave it to you. Now, if you want to expand that by the person of Jesus, who is faith... You're going, to, you're going to expand your faith. You're going to expand that. That's going to happen. Don't ever check yourself. See, when people say they lose their faith, you didn't lose your faith. You lost your confidence in the faith that God gave you. 
That's what happened. That's why it's so important to stay in an environment like this. You have to be in deep waters when deep crises come against you. You have to. Otherwise, you'll question, you'll switch from this friendship of God. He's so awesome. I love God. We sing it. We sing it. We sing it. Boy, we sing it. But when the crisis hits, here it comes, man. What kind of waters and depth do you have in God to challenge the depth of wickedness that has come against you? If you're playing at a shallow level and you got hit by a tidal wave, it's a tough way to stand when you hit that hard. But if you're in deep waters, you barely even feel it. You guys all right? It's like in a tsunami. When a tsunami first, it moves because when it shifts underneath, something shifts. Oh, on top of the water, it doesn't look like much. But as it goes towards the shore and it gains the height and the momentum of the energy that was released, it's something else called a tsunami, right? There's things that are shifting. I can feel it in this atmosphere, right? Things need to shift. You're actually going to give yourself permission for the tragedies that you came and blamed yourself. I was lacking in something. That's why I did. God says, shut up and shut that down. <laughs> Knock it off. Because he's not here to try to measure you why you it failed. He's trying to get you to understand why, why, it, why, why it will succeed. If you know Jesus, that's how he knows the value of who he is to you. The question is, is do you know the value of yourself to him? He needed friends, people. He wanted friends with him. Think about it. When he made Adam, what did God, tell, what did God say to Adam? It's not good for him to be what? So when Jesus came, he took on what? The last Adam. It's not good for him to be alone. He needed friends. Woo! It's true. Remember that song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus? I'm thinking, oh my God, that takes me back to United Methodist Church back in 1969. Oh yeah. There's a lot of truth in that. It was an unformed revelation that never materialized into the relationship that was necessary because religion usurped the value and the vacuum that was left by not walking that revelation all the way through. You guys okay? Yeah. Yeah. Can I keep going? I'm going to skip through the next verses because the, the disciples are going wonky on him. Dude, if he's, he's, Jesus says, you know, if we're going to go to he's, he's asleep. And so you've heard me say, you know, anything that you see, please hear me in this. This is why you can say it. Anything that's dead in your world in the kingdom, that's not death to God. That's just somebody that's asleep. That's all it is. See, we always take it permanent. We always take, we take the emotion and it usurps. What, if you hear me right, on the way to Emmaus, the emotional trauma closed the scripture. And that's why he said he had to open the scripture and start from Moses and go all the way through again. Because they had closed scripture. Because the trauma of what they felt had their eyes shut down. Even though the new resurrected Jesus, right there he is, just like with me. There he is. There he is. And you got to shut down because trauma shut your eyes. That's what happened. Soul's a big deal. It's a big deal. So you realize... There's some things that are happening here. So then let's go into verse 10, or verse 11. Well, it started 10. But if anyone walks during the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Then this he said, and after this he said to them, our friend. Woo, there he goes with that friend thing again. Dang it. Lazarus has sleep, fallen asleep, but I'm going to so that I can wake him from sleep. The disciples then said to him, Lord, if he's falling asleep, he'll come out of it. Come on, like, you know, he'll get healthy. It'll be, it's just a flow. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he's falling asleep, he will come out of it. And then Jesus said he spoke, he, was, he clearly had to tell him he spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking about an actual sleep. So Jesus then said to them plainly, Lazarus died. God, that's a, that's a, listen, people, I can't tell you how refreeing this is to understand when somebody near you dies and you were in it, man. I mean, Think about some people that have actually prayed around the world for one person they didn't make it. Have you ever thought well, why? Did, if you can have you know you have 50 million people praying for praying for one dude and he doesn't survive, then what's this all about? You know why? Because we want an answer. We don't want understanding. That's it. 
That's it. What's the one of the seven spirits of God? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. All right. Keep going. I'm going to switch now to a glory chapter to help, help, help kind of unlock this. So he goes to John 15. Go to John 15. <laughs> By the way, Jordy's going to be here tomorrow, who used to be my worship leader with me at ILC. She'll be here tomorrow. She'll be here with us on Saturday. I saw some, uh, for tomorrow and then Saturday, yeah. Some people go, I don't know who she is. She's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. She'll pull out of the atmosphere what needs to be sung because the sound has captured what God wants to say. That was pretty good. Make a t-shirt out of that. John chapter 15. This is my commandment, verse 12. This is my commandment that you love one another just as I loved you. I'm in deep waters here, people. I realize it's not shouting, yelling, and prophesying, and healing, and all that stuff. That's not why I'm here for this one. <laughs> Trying to get you to get some depth laid here. This is my commandment that you love one another just as I loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that a person lay, will lay down his life for who? Hmm. Interesting. You are my friends, and if you do what I command you, that's a funny play in that command there. I'll get back to that. No longer do I call you slaves. That means at one time, he did. Okay, stop right there. Let's take a look at Jesus now again. I called you slaves. It's not that he saw you as a slave, but you saw yourself as a slave, and he met you at your language to pull you up to his. really good, people. It's better than you're saying amen, but that's okay. The reason I'm saying that is because you realize the power of this is you thought it was faith that tripped you up. Well, it says it's impossible to please God without faith. You know, when I return, will I find any faith? You know what he's saying? When I return, will I find any friends? Or am I just like coming back to these people that were like the children of Israel that says, huh, you know my works, but you don't know my ways. And Moses is going, yeah, you guys. And then God calls Moses his, what, friend. Wow. You hear where I'm going now? You see what's going on here? You think Jesus is going to do stuff because you got faith? He can, but he's not driven by that. He'll hit you first by friendship before he hit you for your faith. See, it just takes everything off. I know if I tell Michael... You come get me at 6 o'clock at the hotel. He's coming because he's true to his friendship to me. I don't sit there going, God, i got to read more about Michael to make sure he gets here at 6 o'clock. <laughs> okay. When he was 14, da, 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 and he did that, he committed, and he did it. Oh, that was good. And my faith is building for Michael. <laughs> here he comes. Ooh, that's bad. He was two minutes late. Oh, Okay, well, I know he's good, so let's, let's build more faith. I need to put in more content, more content, so I can measure myself against this king that requires a substance that I can actually prove myself to pull the handle on the juke bar down to the, uh, the slot machine, and I get a payback because I paid enough into it. I finally get something back. It was my faith that did it. Uh, that's not how it was designed, people. Now, faith is the substance of things what? Then what? Now, Jesus is. Finish it out. He's the substance. He's the guy. See, it, just, it begins to, you start playing with this, you go, huh. But hearing comes, faith comes by, yeah, who do you think you're listening to? Jesus, your friend. Whew. Are you guys catching this? I think I've got, maybe I'm more excited about it than you are, but you're realizing it's not a substance that you have to obtain in order to please him, but the pleasure of being a friend with him, joint heirs with him. He actually sees you as equal people. He doesn't talk to you, oh, I'm a little higher than you. You need to submit. I command you. <laughs> what a true friend would go is, 
I go, man, just look at this commandment. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna tell you what you need to do, and you're gonna get it. That's what a friend would talk. It comes out across as a commandment, but as a friend, it's not. I adjure thee by the authority that I'm in, for I am higher than you. I command you to do this. But see, subconsciously, a lot of us see Jesus that way. You wouldn't even approach. Now, I know I could kid with him, and I could kid with Jesus just like that. You guys okay? Let's keep going. I know it's kind of a, it's kind of a, mm, it's just like, mm. Okay, verse 15, John 15, 15. No longer do I call you what? Slaves. For the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends because, listen to it, people. Listen to what he is saying. Listen. He wants to bring the glory to the value of the relationship because he sees you as a friend. You cannot get it by faithing it in. It's built on relationship to him. Listen to what he says. I have called you friends because, listen, all things that I've heard from my father, I have made known to you. Equality in relationship. You didn't choose me. I chose you. You were in me. My relationship started because we were together before I said, let there be. Before there was in the beginning, I was already with you. I was your friend. And you, can, you could probably hear his voice trembling a little bit. He's going, I had you. I know you. I know you. You were in me. I lost you. Now you can feel him shaking. He's going, I lost you. You were my friend. Now I'm going to the cross, not because it's going to attain a, a friendship. It's because we were friends. And that friendship is the crucifixion. Not a crucifixion and then a bunch of friends. Whew. So good. You do not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit. Stop. You ever heard the statement, fruit of the Spirit? You know what that implies? What? Produce something. What? Yeah, produce something, true. But it implies if there's a fruit of something to bear out, it requires time. It's agricultural timing for fruit to be bore. That means the stuff that you thought and you're thinking is all jacked up, it's going to take time to get that out of you. And the trauma that it did to you, I am telling you people, in the value of the glory of God, you're going to go, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? Because you're going to feel what it feels like before sin ever hits you, and the mind that's in him, you will think like him. Now, it's not about trying to get miracles and healings, deliverances. That's all necessary at a certain level. Because you've got to demonstrate the value of where you're coming from in order to say, this is, where, this is what happens when you're with me. Sorry, it just does. Okay? But if you can become a friend of God, he's going to give stuff to you. Remember what I said in John chapter 11? His first side, he said, because they, Jesus loved them. And then he says, it's, you know, he's sick. And then he says, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, he loved them. He, it's sandwiched in love. Now, let me give you another thing on love. Would you like help on that? Yeah. Okay. You're not going to love your enemy on your own love. It's not going to happen. So take that off yourself, because there's some wicked people out there that's going <laughs> to bring an end to your love real quick takes the love of God to get it there. So go to Ephesians 1. Maybe I'll start closing this down. I don't want to go really long tonight just because it's Thursday. Ephesians 1. Tell me when you're there. Okay. What am I saying in all this? God is calling us up higher to the value. If you heard what I said before, I'm trying to bring you the mechanics of what's necessary so you can walk to the value of what I was saying. 
Because if you're tripping up and thinking you're not going to get to God because you don't have enough faith, I'm going to tell you this. He's already a friend to you. Let's go along for the ride and see where he's going to take us. Now, in that relationship, your faith is going to get, grow, it's going to get, it's going to grow. It's going to grow. Now, if you hear me right, religion will demand you to read that Bible to get more faith. But the breath, the breath of God will reveal that book so you have a relationship with the person called Jesus, who is faith. He is the word. Faith is a person. It's not a thing. It's not a person. It's a thing. I'm going to hit that button a couple times. I know I've hit it before. Well, I've heard that. Yeah, okay. I want to make sure you got it, though. Now, if you gave me a book on my wife, I'd read that thing in and out. You know why? Because she's my friend. I want to know what brings pleasure to her. What can I do to help? What can I do to support? What can I do? How can I move this out? How can I do this? Versus, oh boy, and then she'll have faith in me? No. The relationship says, I want to know how I can greater expand the value of who she is. And by this relationship, faith will grow. When I say something, she'll come. I know, but not because she has faith, per se. She will. I have faith in that. But I first know her as a friend. I don't put faith on I, I'm going to demand faith on my wife to pick me up at 7.30. I'll prove it to you. You laugh, but that's how we treat God. That's exactly what we do. Come on, Barry, give me a word, Barry. I need some more faith. Faith, brother. Oh, wow, that's really tragic. I, I, that's what happened? Oh, brother, they didn't have enough faith, clearly. You're an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot. I can take you to the scriptures. Jesus healed multitudes, no faith required. <laughs> Ephesians 1, let's go there. Verse 3, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. We've read this two bajillion times. Okay, here we go again. Just as he chose us in him. Where were we? Before the foundation of the world that would be holy and blameless before him what? In what? Love. What? Love. Oh, that love thing. Just like it was with Lazarus that, you know, Jesus sandwiched that love around him. Even though this guy's he's going to go through it. You got to get this, people. He predestined us to the adoption of sons and daughters through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he favored us in the beloved. Okay. Is there any mention of blood or crucifixion before that? Nope. Woo. See, he's talking to us as if it wasn't necessary to do the crucifixion. Hear me right. Obviously, he had to be crucified to get us back to the the relationship and the depth of what we need to be restored to. However, he's telling you, I need you to understand something. You were in me. And the friendship I had with you is what brought me to the cross for you. Not, oh, I need some friends. I'm lonely. i got to go over the crucifixion and cross and see if I can redeem some people back so I can have some friends. That's not what happened. See, this construct that we have about what we think we need to do to get Jesus to do things, that king, slave, king, citizen, all that stuff that we do, that doesn't work. It may work in a moment, but at the end of it, it's tragic because you can't understand why the tragedy happened because you didn't do enough to satisfy this king to get the result that you wanted. Hmm. Okay. It's just food for thought. Now... I think what we'll do, I'm going to just be my first closing. Say, thank the Lord. <laughs> this is my first closing. <clears throat> Dr. Marina, I mentioned this last time I was here. She made this comment about what faith is. Faith is the conviction that can be defended until the evidence becomes visible. Okay, when we hear that, you go, okay, we need the substance of faith. I'll say it again. Faith is a conviction that can be defended. I can defend Michael because I know him. 
I know him. I can defend him. Because I know him. Same thing with God. He's in the unseen realm. It's really, so you think about the stuff that we believe about people, it's, it's, it's bizarre. No wonder people think we're whack. <clears throat> think about it. I mean, I've said this a hundred times here before, but come on, really? This guy, this king goes wonky on God and he runs around as a beast out in the field? Really? He, did, he had feathers? Yeah, he had feathers. Run around for seven years. Yeah, we believe that. We believe that this virgin, I mean, think about it, people, really? Come on. Birth the Savior. Think about that dynamic. Joseph, walking with his wife, pregnant, at their wedding. And all the people are going, really? <clears throat> I mean, there's things that we don't think about because we just, you know, well, yeah, she's, she's born. Well, you don't know what that meant to Jesus and what he did in that whole psyche of what happened. And, you know, do I call my Joseph dad? I mean, come on, really, think about it. You're not my dad. People are going, you're whack, dude. You're goofy. Water to wine. Oh, okay, party there. Okay, sure. Yeah. Axe heads are floating. Oh, boy. This is getting crazy now. Big Caesar departing. Woo! Just like right through. We just went through. And we believe that. I mean, come on. Think about it. Think about the miracles that Jesus did. And, oh, yeah, he did that. Ah, oh, yeah, he just did it. All the stuff that happened in the Old Testament. and Oh, yeah, this fire just came out. Just took him. Smoked him. Wow, okay. All right, so here's what happens. If faith is a conviction that can be defended until the evidence becomes visible, it's like when I say, if I know Michael, and I say by the unseen realm, you're going to be here at 7 o'clock, there's no visibility of him going to be here, but because when I say you need to be here at 7, pick me up, all of a sudden I know he's going to manifest at 7 o'clock because of the relationship I have with him, and I know him. I can defend him. He'll say, if he's going to be there, he's going to be here. Jesus is going to make every tragedy right. If you're going to see it, from a friendship relationship. Not a damning thing on yourself and condemnation for not owning up to a certain level that's required for him to be God to you. He was God before you were here and he's going to be God after you. Bring him here. <laughs> Got to be careful with that. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. I had to put the brakes on, or pump the brakes a little bit before we have him come here. Because you've got to realize, I actually believe that the inside of you, that permanent address that God says, I'm, he's made you so clean that he can actually live there. That's amazing. You've got to give yourself permission to let the resident be himself and let your body be a witness of what's living inside of you. It's not a faith issue at that point. Nothing to do with it. It's the relationship that you can have with this guy that's called God he himself, the Holy Spirit, the seed of Christ. It's a seed, people. It's in seed form. That means you can grow into whatever you want to. That's up to you. That's not him. He did his part. I'm resigning. What do you want to do? You want to grow this thing? Let's go. I am here. I'm permanent. I'm not going anywhere. Now, you may go off, but I'm saying no matter what you do, I'm still here. You may say I've lost faith in something. That's because you're telling me I gave you faith and then I took it away. No, I didn't do that. I gave every man a measure of faith. I'm not going to take that back. You may lose your confidence in the faith that I gave you. That's you. That's not me. That's you. I know that the things that have happened to my family, based on the tragic things that happened, I have committed myself to the friendship of Jesus, not my faith only to make the right or the wrong right. I'm going to go off the relationship. If something happened to my family and Michael's a part of my friendship, I know that Michael's good enough to see me through to the end to make what happened to me right. It's not a faith issue. 
Faith will be born out of it because of the relationship. Yes, I can say he will be here. He will help me. He'll see the absolute end of what's necessary. But you think I got to read more about Michael to get here at 7 o'clock? You're nuts. <laughs> you're, you're messed up. Because if I know somebody, if I say Nora's going to do something for me at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, I know she's going to do it because she's a friend of mine. I'm going to have to go back to, okay, the book of Nora. Let's read stories about Nora and see if I can build up stories about Nora and everything. You know what the funny part about it is? God never records what you did wrong. In the book of Hebrews, all the, all the guys that are there, it doesn't tell a thing about the goofiness that they did. None of it. It's not there. By the way, every person in Hebrews 11, go home and do a study on it. Not one of them had to build faith in order to get done what God asked them to do. Not one of them. But they're in the halls of faith. Think about it. Noah. Who came first? Did Noah go to God or God go to Noah? What happened? Yeah. What about Moses? Oh. Hmm. What about Enoch? Hmm. You know, as you start going through that thing, God initiate. You know why? He sees you as a friend. Listen, here's, a, here's one that's clear off the beaten path. It says, Enoch walked with God and he was no more. It's in the halls of faith. You know what that tells me? Listen to me very carefully. I'm going to say it two ways. Faith is more powerful than death. Let me say it again. Jesus is a person. He is faith. Jesus is more powerful than death. Enoch walked with God because he's a friend with God. And it beat death because he walked with Jesus. He, he didn't have a book to read, people. He's only seven. You think he had a library, Congress of Library, Library of Congress on all the books on Jesus? He had nothing. I can pretty well bet that God came down, started walking with him, and he goes, hey, let's walk together for a while. Okay. This relationship just kept going. It just kept going. And after a while, the aunt goes, you're my friend. You know why? You know why we know he was a friend of God? Because in Jude, it says God showed him that at the end, Jesus returning with his saints in his glory. That's a friend telling you the secrets of what he's to do. Ooh, boy, I'm saying some stuff. It's, it's deeper than I'm getting amen on, but that's okay. I get it. <laughs> If you're hearing this verse, you're going, wait a minute, you mean to tell me how to read my Bible? No, you're going to read the Bible because the relationship now is at a point where you want to know more about him and understand how can we build this relationship and advancement of what needs to happen on this earth. Is that okay? You guys okay? You can't measure yourself. Oh, darn. Didn't have enough faith. Now, Jesus had a ride on the boat. Think about this. You're running with your disciples. These guys are slow. <laughs> slow. The reason he said he turned around, you guys don't hardly have, you have a little faith, man. What's up with you guys? I have showed you my relationship to you, yet you panicked when I'm with you. You don't think that this relationship with me and, and you can actually do things? Really? Think about the disappointment in that. You have little faith. You know, what he's saying is, this relationship hasn't gone very far. That's what he's saying. See, when you start framing it right, now you understand it. <clears throat> Listen, you will hunt down what you're hungry for. If you've been told to hunt faith... Let's switch that. Let's go hunt Jesus. Let's hunt that down. Let's hunt him down and see what he has to say about it. See what this relationship will do, because I believe even if something he pulls back and he says, I'm going to hold back two more days and let him die. You're going, holy, what? Fill in the blank. It's true. You know why it's true? Because we've said it. We go, we have. And you just go, mm -hmm. I thought I was supposed to be more than a conqueror. You are. I thought I was ahead, not there. You are. When you're in relationship as a friend, you are. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. But you're not when you're going, I'm the head, not the tail. You're going, wow, have I read my Bible enough? Have I been, did I do? Yeah, I gave some stuff away this last week. Yeah, I'm okay. I can say that. Right? Listen to me carefully. God is trying to get you guys to understand. He's not trying to give you an answer to everything you're questioning. He's trying to get through the spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding. You need to pay attention to that. I am not here, because you can't get the glory of God to come in and faith today. It's not going to happen. But it will come because you're friends with him. And he's not going to hold back because whatever he shares with the Father, he's going to share with you. See, it's not, it's not a works thing. It's, it's just not. It's just, I'm trying to put a framework to what I brought last time so you understand the steps that's necessary to get there. Well, how do we do it, Barry? How do we do it? Be a friend. That's it. I didn't have to buy a Tesla car to go ride in one because my friend already has one. So I just go with my friend. I'm not I'm reading Tesla manuals. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get enough faith to buy one. Why would I do that when I have a friend that already has one? Why would I try to work up healing when my friend already has it? Why wouldn't you want to want just ride in the Tesla and learn everything about it before you may want to go get one? What a concept. Why don't you go hang out with Jesus so you can get his faith? Wow. Whoo, that's a big one. <laughs> Scripture's real clear on it. It's really clear. Ha, you guys are looking at me like I got seven heads. <laughs> Does this make sense to you guys? Yeah. When Jesus was saying some stuff, you know, when he says, I, when I come back, will I find faith? Will I find friends? Because the drama and the trauma is going to be so high. Here's what I'm seeing right now. We Christians escape under the end time. Not my friend Jesus said, take dominion, occupy till I come, and take dominion. That's not what's being narrative out there on the, on the Christian circuit. That's not, we're, we're figuring it out. We, we're getting there. It's... It was the end when Peter said it, and now it's been 2,000 years, and we're this close. It's going to happen. Putin's going to do it. Here goes Syria, Hezbollah. Oh, my gosh. They're going to hit the button, but we're going to hit the button. We're going to beat them. We're out of here before this all goes down. We'll tell that to the people who went through World War II. World War I, Vietnam War. I mean, everybody does that. They go into panic because their relationship with this God Almighty, wasn't that based on friendship. It was based on, <sighs> fear is powerful. Death is coming, just like it did to Lazarus. And God goes, uh-uh, I'm not going to heal it. Not going to happen. Why? I want you to get understanding. I'm going to make you go through it. You're going to feel this thing, because this is how you're going to earn the authority over it. Woof. See, we don't like to hear that. It says, uh, you know, no thing shall come near me. I'm protected. Oh, my God, I rebuke you from the word. Shut up. <laughs> you don't have a clue what you're talking about. I'm going to end with a poem. Can I read you a poem? <laughs> Did you guys enjoy that? Is it, yeah. is it, was it worth coming here tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Sergeant of Arms. <laughs> Yeah, when you um, hear the, the value of what I'm saying, and I hope that you have, um, this is a poem that was given by a German pastor who happened to be in 1944. It was two days before he participated in the attempt to kill Hitler. Um, Dietrich bon Bonhoeffer is his name. Now listen to it very carefully. Brilliant. People go to God when they are in need, plead for help, yeah, it sounds like the church to me. Pray for blessings and bread. For rescue from their sickness, guilt, and death. So do they all, all of them, Christians and heathens. He just put us all in the same category. People, listen now to what I said in friendship. 
People go to God when God's in need. Think about Jesus now. Find God poor, reviled, without shelter or bread. He's on the cross. See God devoured by sin, weakness, and death. Christians stand by God in God's own pain. God goes to all people in their need, fills body and soul with God's own bread, goes for Christians and heathens to Calvary's death and forgives them both. See, we don't think that God needed us. We don't think Jesus needed us. He needed us. He wanted friends. That's what he was here for. Guess what? The same. Nothing's changed in his mind. He's here to talk to you as a friend. Not to place a demand. Not to make you do something. I just need a friend. Do you think God needs a friend as God? No. But Jesus as who he is in humanity and what he did and what he, what he was intent was? How Enoch got out of here and beat death by faith? How did you do that, dude? You don't even have a new nature. That tells me faith is greater than what death is. We should just settle the issue right there. This guy from the seventh from Adam figured it out. I walk with this guy. I don't need a new nature. I just need him. Wow, well, no, Barry. Everybody's got to die. It's, yeah, we got to do this. That's funny. Enoch didn't do that. He didn't think that way. See, this is deep waters, people. People go, oh, I don't know about that. I, just, I, can't, I, can't. I can't wait to get this permanent resident God out of me so I can go to a place where he's at. How stupid. That is so stupid. Think about it. If God is my permanent address, then what you think you're gaining by going to somewhere where he's already in you? You think that's going to change? You really think it's going to change because you go there, it's going to change? You really believe that? Really? That's the problem, see? That's why we use the promises of not letting death touch us, not doing it. And yet Jesus is a friend. He let his best friend go through it because he's trying to get the authority over it. I mean, there's some stuff here, people. All right. You guys are wonderful. You guys are awesome. Everybody stand up for a minute. Let's just stand up, shake it around. We've been sitting too long. Please hear me on this. Whatever you make the most of makes the most of you. Say that with me. That's right. If you want to make the most out of trauma and tragedy, guess what's going to happen? It's going to make the most out of you. If you're going to take the make the most thing that's going to make the most of you, make a Jesus. Pick that guy. I, I choose him. Because at the end of the day, he's going to say, he says crazy stuff like this. When you go to the Father... You don't have to use my name. He already knows you. See, there's stuff like that. You're just going, oh my gosh, dude, what? What? I don't have to use your name anymore? He goes, no. If you know me, he knows you. See, there's some stuff here. And you got to think, okay, all right. All right. I'm just telling you, people. I, I'm, I'm praying to the value of what God's... I mean, I was, there was times, um, Rodney, that I was thinking about coming here. My spirit was shaking so bad in a good way. It was trembling. It was almost like I was going to go into groanings because there's something here that, is, that has the foundation to carry the weight of what he wants to do. And so it's not like it needs a bunch of people. He just needs some friends to carry it through. Well, it says Paul is a bond slave to Jesus. Just shut it down for a minute. You may have misunderstood what he's saying there. He's actually bound to life. He's not in a slave-king relationship. He's in a relationship to life. That's what he's after. All right, bless you guys. Wow, that was amazing. Um, at this point, we're, we are going to receive a, uh, a second offering for our guest speaker. Um, 
we're just we're, we're speechless. It was such a wonderful uh, night. Really, really thank you, Barry. Let's give it up for one more time. Thank you. Thank you. So we we really want to give into this. Um, we are so blessed that we can give this offering uh, to Dr. Barry. Um, by doing this, you are literally trading into spiritual training grounds um, because by giving to Barry this offering, we're sowing into the kingdom. I truly believe that. He is a, you know, Romans 8 talks about being a manifested son. Well, there's a manifested son right here. I don't know if you realize that, but he is. And, uh, you know, Paul told the Corinthians, he said, imitate me because I imitate Christ. Well, there's Barry. He is imitating Christ. So I, I want to imitate him. And we, we really honor you, honestly. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, yeah, at this point, let's pray. Father, thank you uh, for this amazing word and this, this revelation. And uh, it, was, it was Paul's desire for us to grow in revelation and wisdom. It wasn't his desire. You know, Rodney was reading today Paul's prayers. Paul wasn't asking, I want him to grow in healing. I want him to grow in miracles. He's like, I want him to grow in wisdom and revelation. And that's what we got today. We got some deep revelation. And we thank you, Father. We ask you to increase this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dr. Berry, so many times I roll out of bed onto my knees, and virtually every morning the Lord says to me, go forth majestically. After he'd been saying this for three or four years, he said, do you know why I keep repeating it? And I said, no, why? He says, because you don't get it. But when you get it, yeah. you're going to get up off your knees, a changed man. So say this with me again. I am God's permanent address. So tomorrow morning, when I get on my knees, and he says, go forth majestically, it's because he resides within me. He lives right. within me. I'm not a slave. I'm not a servant. I am a king. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So those of you that are watching online, come back Saturday morning. We'll be live at 1030 a.m. If you can, join us here in person. We would love to see you. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, knowing that you are a friend of God. I bless you now. In Jesus' name, amen.